Welcome! And if you're brand new to 3D printing or you're thinking about just getting started into this field, you're in the right place. Now my name is Steve Kochi. I am certainly no expert in this as I'm just starting down this path myself. But I thought it would be helpful to some people if I put something together and chronicled my journey down this path and uh, shared some of the things that I learned, some of the resources that I came about, and tried to compile them all into one spot to make it easier for other people to get started in this. Now, if you're a more advanced user and uh, you've already got some experience 3D printing and you've got an idea or a thought or something that would help those of us that are just starting, please post it down in the comments. Um, let us share it uh, in your wisdom, your experience, and um, if somebody, you know, if you're watching this video, make sure to go down, read those comments, and then if you find something useful, make sure to thank the person that took the time uh, to, to include that in our comments. So, um, I'm getting into 3D printing. This is going to be something that's going to help me with my uh, robotics, my um, animatronics. Um, I'm going to be uh, prototyping and, and building out a lot of components. This is going to help me. And um, I'm going to kind of show you what, what I decided to go down um, and pick up. I did a lot of research um, and decided for me um, the Creality CR10 uh, was the unit that I wanted to go with. Now, this isn't an unboxing video. There's a lot of those on the internet. And uh, I'll put some links to some of those down there. Those guys are a whole lot more knowledgeable. Creality uh, sent out a lot of these units uh, to some of the more advanced builders uh, so that they could review them. And there's a lot of information. I'll put, a, like I said, the links down below for some of the ones that I found useful. Um, but I just thought I'd go through a little bit um, fill you in on why I decided to go with this unit. Um, I really liked it. It's a very large format, uh, which is, is important so I can print tall things. Um, it has a heated bed, which I felt was important, and it was very affordable. Uh, it had a little bit of a, a bonus discount coupon from Banggood and, and got my unit with some spare nozzles shipped to my home for under 400 bucks. So I felt that was a really reasonable price and allowed me to get into the market. So um, also I thought I would um, include a lot of these resources, uh, places that you can go um, for help and, and uh, maybe to save some money. Uh, you know, I'm so new when I got into this, I thought I could just go to Thingiverse. And if you haven't been to Thingiverse, um, go over there. That's one of the many sites that has got um, a plethora of uh, components that people have already put together and uh, are sharing with the community. And I thought you just went and got a, uh, one of the files from Thingiverse and sent it to your 3D printer and uh, it would print it. Well, it's not quite that easy. They've done a lot of the hard work, but you still have to have a, an intermediate program between Thingiverse and your, your printer. And uh, there are a lot of good choices out there. Again, I'm trying to do this on a budget. So I decided to um, go to, with Ultimaker Cura and, uh, and I've been playing around with that, been very happy with it so far. Again, you can go out and, and spend uh, quite a bit of money buying some other ones, and there's some great product out there, but that might be one you'd look at um, if you're trying to save some money. If um, you can't find what you want on Thingiverse or one of the other sites, um, you may have to design your own. And again, there's a lot of 3D CAD drawing programs. Um, if you're on a budget though and uh, want something that you can use, um, Autodesk Fusion 360 might be something you want to look at. Uh, they, they're free for hobbyists and for students, so a lot of opportunities there. It's a pretty solid program. I've already started playing around with that and doing some designs in there, and uh, so far it seems to be working for me. One other thing, and, and I'm a big fan of the forums. Um, unfortunately, of course, Facebook seems to be uh, the big rage right now, but uh, in this case, if you decide to go with the CR10 uh, from Creality, there's a great Facebook page um, that uh, just caters specifically to the CR10. And um, go ahead and join that group. Uh, you know, join when you order your printer, if that's what you, the printer you decide to go with. Uh, you have to be approved, it takes a few days. Um, and uh, then when your printer arrives, if you have any problems uh, or have any questions, that's a great resource to take advantage of. So uh, again, all this stuff will be down in the comments. Please, if you have ideas, 
uh, thoughts, um, post them as well um, so that we can all benefit from that. Um, now, if you do decide to, to purchase C CR10, uh, a couple of things um, that I might recommend to do before you just assemble it. Uh, this thing comes about 90% assembled and, and if you're anything like me, you just want to jump in and, and bolt the gantry onto the, to the base and plug it in and see if you can print something. But uh, a couple things you want to do, you want to make sure to go through and tighten all the bolts. It's a lot easier to do it now before it's assembled when it's still in a few pieces. So go through and do that. And then underneath the bed of your printer, it's got six wheels and you want to make sure those are all adjusted. And again, that they show that in the unboxing videos how to do that. But do it now before you assemble it um, and save yourself some headache uh, down the road. Now, the beauty of a 3D printer is you, it allows you to make parts to make your 3D printer better. So once you get it up and running, um, you have the opportunity to add some modifications. Now, the, there are quite a few of them uh, for the CR10 uh, that people recommend. And uh, the ones I'm choosing to go with, uh, there's a few things. I want to make uh, the bigger knobs for the bed leveling that fit on there, um, a new um, airflow vent for the nozzle to redirect the air, um, I'll probably build some or get something for the spool so it's a little smoother on the roller. And um, also, if you are, if yours doesn't come with it, my new one did. But um, on the bed, um, there where the electrical wires comes, if yours doesn't have the little bracket to stabilize uh, those wires, here you certainly want to print one of those out. And um, for where your filament feeds in. Um, there's a nice little uh, bracket that keeps it from rubbing up against the threaded rod um, as it goes in, into the and uh, so those are kind of the ones that I'll start off with there's uh, quite a few of them for uh, modifications you can make uh, for the control box uh, to raise it up off the your table I'll probably make that so I can slide things up underneath it there's tool racks and um, those all come in really handy. So that's kind of on my list. I'll put the links to the ones I'm going to start with down below and uh, give you a starting point for that. So um, I'm going to take a break here now. I'm going to go ahead and assemble mine and uh, move it out into its uh, new home out in the garage and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Well, welcome back. It's amazing how time flies, but it's been several weeks uh, since I received my 3D printer and I've now got it all set up in its new home out in the garage and uh, I wanted to go through a few of the things that I found uh, as I was setting mine up that might be helpful for you. I talk about a few things that will help um, maybe get you up and running when you get your 3D printer. So um, the first thing I'd like to, to kind of go over is, is choosing the location for uh, your 3D printer. For me, I, it worked out really well to move it out here in the garage. Uh, I had this nice sturdy level workbench here um, that the, was the perfect location for it, uh, fit it just right. Um, it's well away here in my garage from many of the areas where I do any of my dusty construction work, uh, so that uh, you know helps keep the prints clean. Um, Having it out here in the garage seemed to really make sense as well because any noise that it makes, you know, isn't going to disturb us in, in the living areas of the house or we're watching TV or, or sleeping for that matter. You know, you've got a, a large format printer and uh, it's going to be running for hours and hours, uh, 12, 24, 48 hours, um, you know, for a large print. So, um, you know, having it out here where it's not going to disturb us was really important. and. Uh, and then uh, maybe most importantly of all, it was out here away from where my grandkids might come out and investigate it and get their hands in here and possibly get hurt or ruin a print. Um, or even worse, it was kept away from my cats who aren't allowed in the garage, who would uh, at best add their cat hair to my prints um, or at worst decide that this is their new cat toy. So. Um, this really made sense for me and uh, it's wor really working out well. Now I do want to go over a little bit of the safety part of it. They're all the rare. There have been some instances um, where 3D printers have caught on fire. Again, they're running for a long time. They're hot. Um, you know, you have electronics running. Um, anything can happen. So, you know, take into consideration the safety aspects. Um, I have a smoke detector mounted, of course, right here up above it. 
Um, I've got several fire extinguishers uh, both here on the bench and um, on the far side of the garage if um, I can't get to this one. And um, one other level of, of uh, safety and security, um, I have one of the AFO fire extinguisher balls. You'll see it mounted back there um, above the, the printer. So uh, if there is a fire, they have an internal fuse. The fuse light, it explodes, and then thus putting out the fire. So um, another level of safety that I thought was important. It gives me peace of mind, helps me sleep at night, that's for sure. And uh, I got mine on Amazon for under 50 bucks. So I thought that was a good investment uh, for, for me. So, um, so be sure, be safe, you know, don't keep, you know, a lot of papers or anything else that's combustible around here that uh, might contribute or add to um, a fire if you did have it and, and take your precautions. So um, now when you're trying to get a successful 3D print, um, you know, once you get your printer set up and everything, there's, there's really th three primary elements that all have to be working together um, in order for you to get a successful print. Um, you know, you have to have your bed level, um, you have to have um, a good bed surface and adhesion to the bed of, of, your, uh, of whatever you're printing out. And you have to have your settings correct. Um, so I'm going to briefly go over um, those and what I do. And, and again, links down below um, if you want to explore any of those in more detail with uh, some really talented and knowledgeable people that have uh, gone before us and, and, uh, and will help along that uh, way. So um, leveling the bed uh, usually, you know, takes several turns. You disable your stepper motor and, and you move it around to different spots on your bed and use a piece of paper uh, and, and level it up until it's just kind of sticking and go around several times. Um, I've also found that uh, doing that when, the, when it's hot, when my bed is hot, is more accurate. Um, so make sure that uh, when you're doing that. Uh, and then also, um, I always try and print with a skirt, uh, at least around my print, and then I get to watch, you know, uh, several rotations there um, as the plastic is being laid down to make sure that it's being laid down correctly. So, um, you know, that's kind of the process I go through. Now, you have a lot of choices as far as bed surfaces and what you use for adhesion, whether you're going to use glue or you're just going to use the glass. Uh, there's different mats that you can buy. Um, I decided to go with uh, the 12 by 12 mirror tiles. You can get these at uh, you know any big home store. Um, I, the IKEA ones, I guess, are really popular. I happen to have some on a shelf left over from a project, uh, so that's what I went with. And um, and I use hairspray, and uh, it's worked really, really well for me. I've been very happy with it. Um, so that's what I use. But you know, you can look at some of those other things. One thing with the hairspray is, you know, you spray it on the glass and, and it kind of goes everywhere. One thing I did is cut a box out, put this on my bed, spray it. It kind of keeps that hairspray confined um, and keeps from getting everything else sticky, which is works out really well for me. And then the uh, third item is getting your settings correct. Now. Um, I, I mentioned earlier about uh, the Facebook group, the Creality Facebook group. Uh, there's another one I'll put down below, SandTubes. Um, and both of those Facebook pages have got in their file sections um, some settings profiles that you can use. So I suggest you take a look at a couple of them, try them out, you know, um, see which ones work for you, different layer heights, different speeds. Um, you know, different adhesions, whether it's a raft or a skirt or, or um, a brim. Um, play around with them, look at them, explore those, try them out, um, you know, on some small prints and um, and just get comfortable with the, with the different settings, but that'll give you a nice starting point. Um, so I recommend that you go and look at that. Um, one thing you can do if you're using Cura, and I'm sure all the others will do it as well, um, you can take a print, uh, whatever it is, and, and uh, lower it down on the print bed so it's only printing a little tiny bit of it, you know, and, and you can practice with that. And uh, so you're not using, you know, a lot of filament and spending a lot of time just practicing. So, you know, that's one way you can go about it. So um, I wanted to also show you some of the things that I've done to... Um, uh, add to my printer and some of the additions I've made. 
Um, I did uh, go with the leveling knobs. I think this is important. You're, you're leveling the knobs um, and under there trying to get that bed level. But once you get it level, it usually stays pretty good, but you still may have go in there occasionally and have to go in and tweak it. Um, it's nice to have the bigger knobs. I tried out a couple different styles. Um, ended up going with this one because I liked it because it showed me which way was up. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive uh, which way you turn these to tighten and loosen. At least it was for me, so that's a nice reminder. So that was uh, one of the first things that I did. Um, I also did uh, add the, uh, the little bracket uh, back here on the extruder to help keep the filament from rumbling up against this threaded rod here. Um, I uh, put in a, a, or made up a, a sleeve to put on my spool so that the uh, filament roll um, is uh, more secure on there. I do use Hatchbox. It got really good reviews. I started with that, been very happy with it. Um, and it's carried on Amazon. I can get it the next day. Um, so that's what I've gone with. And um, I also did, uh, I wanted to add a little light. I do have a big light up above this, uh, double fluorescent, but I wanted just a little LED light. So I made some brackets um, for that as well. So, um, you know, those are some of the things I added in. I'll, I'll put those links down below. You can take a look at them. And, um, and if you go this route and go with this printer, you might want to uh, make some of those for your printer as well. And then um, if you're ready to take it to the next step, <laughs> um, maybe complicate things a little bit, but uh, make your life a little easier um, as you've got prints going. Um, my office, again, is inside the house. This is out in my garage. And especially early on, you know, I was running out here every few minutes, it seemed like, checking on the prints. And, um, and that can be tedious. So um, I decided to go ahead and uh, set up a system. I used to using a Raspberry Pi and um, a program called Octoprint and uh, printed up a 3D case uh, uh, for my Raspberry Pi and for a camera. And so I now have a camera monitoring my prints. Um, I can uh, load all the, the files straight from my computer. I don't have to run out here with an SD card and plug it in and, and stuff, but I can monitor it from my computer and, uh, and, and do all the loading um, over the Raspberry Pi wirelessly and over my router system. So that works out really good. And then you may want to take it even one more step uh, farther. Again, we may not be home or we may want to leave when, when we've got a print going and you will, will want to monitor your print. Um, you know, if a print goes haywire and you're printing spaghetti here, um, you want to be able to shut your printer down and, and uh, uh, quit wasting filament and time and, and possibly causing a fire danger there. So um, I use a, an app on my phone called Printoid, have it hooked up through Octoprint, and now I can be out at the store or at the gro you know, grocery store or, you know, um, out to dinner or whatever, and I can check on my print and, and over the, with, check it with the camera and make sure everything's running right. And if it's not, I can shut my print down. So that's a, it, another nice thing. But I'll put uh, links on how to do that. A little more complicated uh, to, uh, of a project, but very, very helpful if, uh, if you get into this, especially start doing some of the longer prints. So. Um, I hope you found that this all helpful. If you've got some ideas, comments, uh, please add them down in the uh, comments section. Um, if you found it useful, I hope you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm always trying out new techniques and, and uh, new methods to use uh, with my animatronics and, and then make some kind of a video here to share it with you and, and hopefully you'll find this useful uh, when you go to build your projects as well. So with that, I suggest you go out and build something. Until next time.